before I start this video, I just wanted to say that I'm recording a little bit earlier than normal, and I'm actually re-recording some of the footage that I did before. Um, there was something that happened a couple days ago when I was trying to record, and it didn't do the right thing, and now I'm just going to record it again, for the most part. I'm going to show the video that I actually recorded the other day, because I do like what happened with that end product, but for the most part, that's just going to be like a bonus treat. Uh, everybody else, I uh, hope you guys have a, a good day. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start this video. Just want to throw that out there. If I sound kind of tired or something, that's just the reason why. Thank you. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of A Block. And today our screen is a little bit different. Um, we're going to be learning how to draw. We're going to start learning how to draw today. Um, isn't everybody excited? I'm pretty excited. I'm also tired uh, it's six o'clock in the morning and this daylight saving time stuff is not helping me and my body still lets me wake up really early and I don't know why but that's okay um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started with this new video um, today we're gonna be doing the general basis we're gonna be drawing shapes so if you heard from my last video um, I gave you guys a little bit of homework to get your stuff ready because we're gonna start this today and I'm not gonna be using uh, pen and paper because that'd be kind of hard to, to record uh, properly with uh, whatever materials that I had so we're not going to do that so before we start we might as well get a good look around at uh, what I'm working with um, this is my little setup this is clip studio paint EX this is um, this is a software that I use when it comes to my drawing my landscapes all this stuff it's really good to have a nice program and clip studio has been probably my favorite program for the past uh, three years i think it's been three years but that's regardless that's besides the point um so if we look over here to anybody who hasn't actually been to um been through a uh, program like this before i'll give you a quick little run through so on this very left side here we have all of our tools and supplies and then in this next column here we have different variations of the tools you might have your color wheel or you might have your settings wheel for your brushes and you have things like you know your brush ties down here in this little area and right here you have um, little colored palettes that you can switch between um, these are really good especially if you want to you know put in the actual number of your rgb color um, coloring you might pick a color that you like and it's always good to have a regular pencil around like i do here and it's good to you know mark down a color especially if you find it and it's like oh this one looks really nice and you want to use it for something write it down in a, in a little notebook on your desk and that way you'll have it um up here you have your saving stuff and a couple other editing tools and over here right here on this side we have the other things that manipulate the window or manipulate the drawing itself you might have you know your layer count here which is actually really useful when you guys are going through uh, drawing online or digitally rather you have your you know your layer, your layers which keep everything separate so you don't ruin something when you erase over it or whatever you have your zoom options your uh, tilting options and your screen options to let you either you know to return to actual size or um, fit it relative to whatever and then this little bar right here you may not be able to see it so well but this little bar right here where my mouse is um, it's actually where we do uh, so you can put it's where all the files appear when you're working so if you have one file here one file here one file here you could actually pop them out and you can fit them it's kind of modular how the system works so you could even go down here you could do things like a timeline which is an animation timeline i rarely use it because i usually don't do as much animation as i want to but maybe in the future we'll try that um i'm gonna put this away like that oh, wait wait a second go back go back there we go and we're just gonna take a look around um okay so this is the magnifying glass um you zoom in and zoom out with this as you could probably imagine you just press it and you could you know zoom in and zoom out but because if you notice i can't do anything with this screen because it's actually not a canvas but that's we're gonna fix that in a little bit i'm gonna go over a couple more tools which are pretty important and we're gonna go from there so then we have the movement tool this moves you around or in some in other cases it actually moves your um image around when you're uh editing so it's actually really good if you're gonna move something away from a piece to do that you could also use the lasso tool the lasso tool is really good for circling something and then pulling it away 
as you can see here, there's different things like there's like the ellipse, the ellipses, there's a rectangle, polyline, selection. All these are really good tools, especially to, um, you know, isolate something from the rest of an image. But I often use the lasso because lasso just, uh, I've been using the lasso for majority of the time I've been doing this stuff. So I don't feel like I'm going to use these anytime soon. So we also have, we're going down to the pin. There it is. Um, I have a whole lot of pins here. I have a whole lot of pins, but I usually stick between the regular G pin or this pin here. Uh, sometimes I use this one here. Some of these, these are really good. These pins are all really, uh, these all pins are, I've been looking around Clip Studio or looking around Twitter, finding uh, new brushes to try. And a lot of these brushes are actually really cool. This side brush is pretty cool. This NG pin right here is really cool. All these pins, you want to find, you know, your favorites and then stick to them or experiment a little bit. So I'm going to go back to this one. Um, then we get our pencils. We have a whole bunch of pencils and pastels and other stuff like that. I use this perfect pencil here and I use this pencil here. I don't know where I found this one, but I use this one the most. And this is actually my sketch pencil for the most part because it's so versatile. Um, and then we have things like uh, this turnip pen. I don't know what this is actually. I've tried it and I don't know what it is, but uh, it always kind of just was there. You have your object moving tool right here. Um, you can manipulate an object or you can manipulate a particular um, import or export or other things like that. It's probably got more features for that, but I actually don't know that much, but uh, we'll see. Um, we'll see how that works uh, later. We have one of my favorite tools, the paintbrush tool. Um, the paintbrush tool, as you can see, I've got a whole lot, a whole list of paintbrushes. I mainly use uh, this paintbrush here for my landscape and stuff like that because it's been so useful and it actually helped me learn how to paint. So I use it as a block, as like a flat brush, and I use it to block in my surroundings. Um, we'll do that another day. Over here we have our eraser. Look at that cute little eraser. It's kind of cute. Um, you see, you got different erasers here. These are actually, for the most part, the default erasers. Um, and I usually don't use anything more than soft and hard, though we might experiment with some of these later. Um, and then we have things like uh, the eyedropper. You just press I on the, uh, the keyboard. And for your for reference, if you look at uh, if you whole hover over, you can actually see that some of these have um, have hotkeys on the on the paper really useful I mean you can on the keyboard I said paper you can use these really well and you can use things to switch between them or do whatever as you can see whenever I press a button it'll move to another one and this is really good to use however I don't use that because I have a graphic tablet so I just end up pressing um, on the pad or anything so I do this I just use my um, I just use my pen and then you have some other things down here when I can go into these. These are just uh, effects and it's a blender. But I don't really use a blender. You can use the airbrush and I missed airbrush. Just airbrush. <laughs> um, I really only use soft. I don't really use hard that much, but maybe hard has a better use for some things. I don't know. I usually use soft and I just turn up the hardness and opacity. Okay, and down here we have our fill. Fill is really useful, of course. You might know fill from Dr. Phil. Fill is good for um, going into lined areas and then pressing and it just fills it up and it's really good and really quick. Hey, it's quick work of coloring. Um, and I'll, I've just recently gotten into the church of fill. Um, <laughs> we got our um, text. Our text, you can actually change the um, text. You can download fonts online and you can actually go through them. You can see that I have a whole bunch of fonts on here. Like this is the one I use for comics, or I use this one too. Um, and then I have like a whole bunch of other ones, like these and some of these crazy ones. Like I can find one, uh, like Prism, Prism, I think Prism, I think it's called. There's speeding. There's that one. I don't see Prism. It's right here somewhere. It's Overdose Sunrise. Uh, I don't see it. There it is, Prism. There it is, right there. It's really weird. Anyway, that is that. Let's move that away. We have our gradient tool. I don't use this a whole lot because you can usually make a gradient by yourself if you just do, um, you know, a soft airbrush and um, slowly put it in, pull it in, the color in. You have your ruler. Um, this ruler is really good for making lines and other things. You also have curve rulers, figure rulers, um, perspective ruler. I use this one sometimes. And all these are good for making your, your uh, lines neater. Um, and then you have the direction tool, I guess is what it's called. Um, but you can make, you know, boxes, ellipses, polygons, 
lines, all these things with uh, with just pulling by just pulling. Um, this is a little bit neater than the uh, ruler sometimes if you just want to make a quick line. But uh, other than that, that's about it. And then you have down here. <sighs> Sorry, I'm tired, really tired. Um, but right here, these two, um, this is actually what you would use for your comics and stuff. So here you can see you can make, you know, your new frames with comics, or you can actually cut frames out or divide them, depending on how you use them. Um, I don't use this as much because I just use my own, I just make my own templates. But you can use this if you're really getting into comics. And might I add, Clip Studio is actually really good with that. So if that's your cup of tea, I consider buying Clip Studio anyway, but that's a good little side thing that you could do. And you could buy more, uh, you can download more, um, some more speech bubbles and more frame types and anything like that. You can do that on Clip Studio's um, dedicated uh, app. You can do that. But anyway, the last two we have is here the balloon icon. The balloon icons are really good for making text bubbles, like I said before. Um, they're really nice. I like using them because it's a lot cleaner. You even select the outline if you want. If you choose this, you could actually choose the color of the uh, outline. You can make it a uh, solid white bubble, or maybe you get uh, you maybe there's kind of people that likes to color code your um, your lines or color code your the lines of your ellipses. You can use this to do that too. Okay, and then there's the correct line. I actually don't know what this does because I've never used it. Um, don't 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 make fun of me. I don't know what this is. Uh, that's it. Um, we're gonna go back up here to my pen pencil. So you see this, and we kind of already covered a lot. But I guess the next part would be, well, how do you turn on the canvas? Well, I can't seem to show you on the thing. I don't know why. But you're gonna go up to File up here, and you're gonna go to New. Uh, it's a little drop-down window. And you're gonna start up here. So I'm gonna put this down closer into the circle. Cause I'm just realizing this at the top, most part of the composition is not available. How aggravating, but it's okay. Um, all of the all of the hotkeys for window, for file, edit, all those stuff, that's all up there where it normally would be. Okay, so now that that's done. So you're gonna go to illustration four right here. We have to name this thing because it's a file on a computer. It's gonna take up space. And these things get really big quickly. So let's change the name to, let's change the name to A Block. There we go. And now that we have that, we can take a quick look around at the rest of the things here. Okay, so it says use of work here. This is what we use for, you know, our um, different items. So. There's four different types or five different types of five. Um, there's illustration, which I usually use. Illustration is just for you know your general your general page, your general page for drawing or making graphic design piece or whatever. You use this the most, I feel, because I mean unless you're doing comics for the most part, then this is what you use. Um, even if I use com if I make comics, I use this to use illustration. Then they have comic, comic. If you see that comic pulls up a whole bunch of stuff. Um, pulls up things like, you know, story information, the title, um, what page it is. It gives you a little template down here. I can't really see it that well. Um, you can actually look at the list borders. This is pretty standard standard stuff for a comic page. And then you have your different widths and height, everything here. Um, you have your, you know, your subtitles, Arthur, who I, who I am, and the start page, color of all the stuff. All this stuff is really useful if you want to make this stuff. You have your serialization stuff. I think it's serialization. This is praying to fanzine. This is basically a magazine thing. It's a very similar process, but you're gonna even have cover uh, cover page and stuff like that. And then we have the animation folder here. Wait, wait, wait. What's this one? Oh, this is just showing everything. So these two are together, but if you press this, it'll show every little detail. So look at that. Cute. And then we have our animation folder. Our animation folder is actually really pretty much exactly what you think it is. It's making animation from, you know, the width and how much animation, how big the animation is to the story frame, the story frame, or story name rather. Um, the number of stories you're gonna do, or and you got timeline and all the other stuff. So the timeline is down here, a little down here thing right there. And that's pretty much it. We're not gonna talk too much about the rest of these. We're gonna talk about illustration. So let's go back to illustration and let's have a look-see. Okay, so 
we're working on uh, our canvas and I set my preset to custom that way I can actually make mine but if you want to you could always just kind of go around and look at these these are really uh, really nice so there's like you know starting from 800 to 600 800 by 600 um, it goes all the way up you can do postcard animated stickers or whatever and then you could actually do custom I usually do custom because custom to me makes the most sense because I can just make whatever numbers I want and then we just roll with it so um, you can save that preset or you can just kind of do whatever um, there's a unit of measurement you can do millimeters centimeters inches pixels or parts I just use pixels because pixels are a little bit easier to work with on a computer so uh, Especially if you're making backgrounds with 1920 by 1080, you're saying. Um, and then we have our width and our height. So I'm actually going to change this, but you could change it to whatever you want. You want if you want a longer composition, you'd want to use a, you'd want to use a slightly bigger height than your width, and vice versa for a slightly wider display. You change your width more than your height. And then we're going to go to our resolution. Now resolution, uh, I keep it at 300 because um, you use this to have your it's pixel density, especially when you're printing. So keep it at 300 if you want it printing quality. I don't know why I read that. I just read that somewhere and it said it was better. So, okay. And then right here, you got paper color. Paper color, you can do whatever you want. This is actually just a general template. And a lot of times people just use this just because it's a little bit easier to, you know, go around and make your color page, you could change it to this, you could change it to white, you could change it to black if you want to. All you're doing with this uh, coloring is just making it, you're making it a little bit easier on your eyes. So normally I use something like a lighter color, like that maybe. It helps your eyes when you're looking at the screen for a set amount of time. And the harshness of the white gets really bleaching. So you might want to use like a lighter color, but today we're gonna use white because we're gonna damage our eyes and we're gonna do something basic. Okay, so we've covered everything on this page, um, and we're going to press OK. And there's a canvas. And now, as you can see, you can draw. Now, with a graphic tablet and with a pencil alike, you're going to want to be able to, you know, draw and get a good sense of your weight of your hand when you're drawing. That is a thing, actually, when you're drawing you want to make sure that your weight is appropriate so as you see right now I'm just doing a little bit of practice you can even do this on your own if you want to um, if you're drawing with a tablet or if you're drawing on a piece of paper you know go ahead and uh, draw a line and what you're gonna do is you're gonna slightly or slowly draw a line and you're gonna start out really light and you can use your pressure and see how high your pressure goes with it so this means that my tablet is properly aligned with the settings that I have for it. And I'm just drawing right now to make sure everything is straight. Okay. If you have a pencil and you're not sure about its uh, general quality or you want to check, you know, how dark the pencil can get, it's a good practice, especially if you're doing some traditionally. Sometimes I do this just to, just to do it, right? It's really useful. Okay. So. That was a little bit of a test. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so first things first, let's start with the basics. You wanna make sure that you're actually doing this properly. And so a good rule of thumb is to go ahead and just start drawing some circles. So circles are, are probably one of the most important things that you'll probably be doing, using rather, when it comes to figure drawing or anything like that. And that's because circles are, you know, the most, most organic form of movement it's a straight circle that wasn't a great circle but hear me out when you're drawing a circle it doesn't really matter because you're just trying to get your arms moving right so when it comes to circles let's just keep it in mind that circles are and curves in particular right these curves are the most organic forms known to man when you draw something or when you're looking at something you don't ever notice things being you know straight up and down things are more like this right you don't have a mountain chain going like this you often have a mountain chain going like this with swooping curves or things like that and you see compared to this rough jagged edge you have this nice curve going this nice momentum of the curve and that's normally how we perceive the world so when you're drawing circles you're not actually just working on you know on your general 
on your circle building skills, you're actually drawing them because you're trying to get a sense of your flow and the flow of the world around you. It's really important to do that. Now, lines have a purpose too, because you know lines have to be um, your practice because it helps you stabilize your hand, right? Like that, you gotta draw really straight lines. So it's always a good rule of thumb to practice the both of them. So when I start classes, or when I start drawing, let's go back, um, I often do circles. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fill this page up with little circles and we're gonna get our hands all warmed up to make sure that we're nice and moving. So we're gonna draw now. So I'm gonna draw some circles. As you can see, they don't have to be perfect. In fact, they don't have to be perfect at all, but they want them to be nice and simple white, right? So there's that. And rule of thumb about these circles, just so you know. When you're working with circles, a good thing to keep in mind is most beginner artists, um, they draw with their wrists, right? Drawing with your wrist doesn't get you that much, right? So as you can see, I'm drawing with my wrist right now. Look at the range of motion that my wrist has when I'm drawing. Let's erase that. Your wrist doesn't really have that much, uh, doesn't have that much curve to it. It doesn't have that much reach. And as you can see, my wrist can only go so far when I'm trying to work. Oh, put that back. Go back there. Oh, jeez. Come on, dude. I got a show to, I'm doing a show. Uh, put it down. There we go. So when you're drawing, keep an eye on it because a lot of people, they'll do like this when they want to make something, right? And that can work, but it's not necessarily the best course of action. So if you draw with your forearm like this, you have far more range of motion than normal. And if you draw with your whole arm, you really have a range of motion. So keep that in mind when you're drawing. Use your whole arm. It's there for a reason. It's a it's a point where you can you know reference as you move around the canvas. Okay, great. Let's erase these because we did a lot of circles. Now let's move on to some lines. Another exercise I like to do is taking two points like this. And then just dragging your pencil to the point, trying to keep it as straight as possible. I suck at this one, but it's good practice to make sure that you have an idea of, you know, your lines. Uh, that would have been perfect if I actually made that. Wow. Okay. You can just do this a couple times. Just do it a couple times. Maybe you want to do some short ones to make sure that you're getting it. <laughs> that one didn't even make it. Poor thing. Okay. But that's okay. You could even do a connect dot situation like this, right? Just to try to get a, a feel of the world around you. It doesn't have to be quick either. It could take, you could take your time. Like that. You just want to get your, your arms moving in the right order. So now we have our little web of lies here. Let's erase it. <laughs> we're gonna erase it. And what we're gonna do next is, after we get this little exercise out, we're going to do some other shapes. So, with figure drawing, there's a lot of shapes. So there's a circle, but there's also things like, of course, our good old buddy, the rectangle. It's a bad rectangle, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep that. We also have the ellipses. I don't know how to spell ellipses that well, so let's go down here. There it is. You saw that? <laughs> there we go, ellipse. I think that's how you spell it. And then we have the cube, which is the graduated cousin of the, uh, of our handsome rectangle up here. We have the cylinder. And cube cylinder and then we have a couple of a couple other ones like the sphere there we go that's an ugly sphere but there it is with all of its glory there's a sphere and then there is the cone to the cone 
Now there's other shapes too, but a lot of times you're gonna be doing these shapes a lot, so don't be, don't be upset about it. So here is our family. There they are, nice and happy, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put some guidelines on these so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. There we go. But now with all of these little pieces, all of these play an important role, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you understand each and every single one, because not only do these have relationships to each other, they help each other. I'm gonna put a triangle here too, because why not? Um, these are all, there we go. These are all important in the realm of drawing because these all have different um, aspects to them from the lines that we talked about to the flow of the curves that each and every single one of these has and depending on how you use them you can make a new composition or you can make a new item and if you break it down into its shapes and its core components they become extremely important and they can basically save your save your butt if you're trying to make something that you may not know how to do if you break something down into its shapes it will eventually work for you and you can eventually make it more complex if you add more shapes to it and then render them into each other. So what does that look like? Um, well, let's erase this. Or rather, let's do this. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to hide this layer. Let's suppose we have a, hmm, let's see. Let's make a face. So. We're gonna just start off with a face. So we got our guard lines going on. And let's just say we want to do this. Well, what else is part of a face besides a circle? Well, we have a cylinder for the neck, right? So let's just do that. And then we can make the nose a rectangle, right? We can make our nose a rectangle. And we can even do smaller rectangles for a nose. And let's just say we want to make the eyes. Um, let's make the eyes oopsies. That'll work. And small arms, please. And then we can make a triangle little eyes and then little eyebrows. And we'll just do that and do that. And we can even add a little smile. And we can render this out to make it a little bit more polished. So let's actually uh, do that real quick so I can show you the, the steps, the little bit of a process. So I'm going to erase that. Hello there. Actually, that's what the nose looks like. There's a little ball on the top of your tip of your nose, so we're gonna make that a little bit more realistic. Oh goodness gracious, took his nose off. Um, okay, let's do that. Let's grab this. We're just gonna make this a little bit neater. And uh, um, we're gonna give him a little bit of a haircut too. Why not? Since I'm feeling generous. Um, let's uh, let's give him some hair. Let's give him a, uh, let's give him a, a cylindrical hairstyle like this. There we go, and there we go. Give some ears, <laughs> and now we have a face. But you can see, we have a cylinder, we have a circle, we have our rectangle, we have our ellipse, and we have another cylinder. Um, and we have some triangles. Now, we have our fully fleshed out person. We're gonna put person on the side just because. And this is what we have now. Look at that. Nice and pretty. So, as you can see, you can do this with pretty much any um, shape that you may come up with. This is just a good way to practice your shapes because you're gonna be doing a lot of ellipses, a lot of circles and a lot of uh, cylinders sometimes at least this is what I use the most so keep these in mind because these relationships are extremely important in how you make your stuff so back to let's, that. let's get back to this so keep these in mind and always remember to have these on hand when you're drawing because you never know when you're gonna need them or how you're gonna need them. So when you're drawing, you might wanna just take some time to 
focus on ellipses or maybe focus on a circle. That's not a circle, this is a circle. Or maybe you want to work on your rectangles or your spheres. In any case, you want to try to work with these because not only do some of these give you your general shapes, these also give you your dimensions with volumes like cubes, cylinders, cones, and spheres. Because everything is three-dimensional and you've got to trick people into thinking that something is not, is actually three-dimensional when it's not. And that sounds strange, but most artists do it anyway, especially if you're shading something and you make it look extremely believable and lifelike. A lot of times these paintings are no joke. People make a lot of money off of this kind of stuff. And this is how they make it. They use this rendering techniques and they understand the fundamentals of shape and structure to create things that are more believable, especially in the realism sense. So that is the video for today. Good job, everybody. You guys get a little, that is not, that's not what I want it to be. <laughs> that was supposed to be a thumbs up. Let me try that again. Yeah, that's good enough. That's <laughs> good enough to thumbs up, I guess. So with that in mind, everybody go on ahead. And my homework for today is this. I want you to draw these shapes, get used to them because we're going to start using them a lot in our next video where we're going to talk about a couple other things that we can start before we get into our really big projects like um, like landscapes or like drawing figures. So we got a couple of things we're gonna do for the next video. I think I might get you guys into wireframing, which is pretty simple. It doesn't, it isn't, um, it is, this is not graphic design or web design wireframing. This is a different type of wireframing. But let's talk about that when we get to it. So I have a video that I worked on before and I like that video, so I'm actually going to show you all that one too. I'm probably going to show you the audio too because I actually really like that one. But for now, um, enjoy that video. I'm going to play it right after this one. Have fun, everybody. Stay safe, and I'll see you strangers later. Go with it. So, this person's going to have a lopsided head. Gee, uh, kind of like me. So, we're just going to draw it. Um, I'm not going to draw a whole lot. You'll find that everything that you're working with um, is a shape of some kind. So, you're gonna wanna just draw. And once you get used to shapes, everything will eventually, you know, just work. Just like that, we have a, a face. And I could do probably a little better than that. But the point being, everything that you draw, especially once you, uh, once you really start sketching and once you start understanding how shapes go and coincide with everything else, you'll feel a lot more confident and you'll understand that the shapes that you're working on are exactly the exactly what they are. They're shapes, they're building blocks for the whole of what you're drawing. So I'm gonna draw one more face before I uh, let you guys go for the day and I'll give you your homework. And we're going to draw just a basic character. So we're gonna take what we learned today, these basic shapes, these circles, and I'll even do a couple of things like a, a cone and other stuff like that. Um, and we'll get into it. So I'm going to do this quick thing and then I'm going to let everybody go for today. And we're going to move on to the next set of our shapes. We're going to get deeper into shapes for the next video. And we're going to make sure that we understand that the basis of the whole of art, it's not just the circle, it's the triangle, it's the cylinder. All of these things make cohesive, uh, co cohesive shapes. So I'm just going to draw a quick character. And I'm going to draw him kind of cute. I'm, looks like I'm going for my character Virgil. And I draw comics, but uh, I've been busy lately, so I can't exactly do them. But uh, as you can see, this actually is enough space. And one more thing before I uh, forget. Drawing with shapes um, is really useful. And if you ever feel like you're going to run out of space on your, uh, on your particular... Uh, page you could always go to edit up here and let's go down to change canvas size and you could always 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 um, you know shrink it so I'm actually gonna shrink this because I don't need this much space we're gonna do this that we're gonna shape it and if you're not sure about the if this if your software doesn't come with the ability to actually physically um, handle the um, the window so you can actually get a good idea of what the actual uh, elements are you can you know play around with the you can play around with the general pixel number until you get what you want that usually helps too but 
sometimes, and I think most softwares usually allow you to edit the soft, edit the, the window with uh, the pull and push icons, so that way it's a little bit easier and it works a little better. But if you feel like you're going to do that a lot, try working big and then shrinking it down until you get what you're working with. Because working big can also be a problem too. Anyway, so uh, we have a character here. I'm gonna finish him up because this is a uh, this is actually one of my comic characters. I don't draw him a whole lot, and you've probably seen him on my on one of my videos. I probably have uh, used one of my older um, one of my older recordings of me drawing Virgil. This is actually Virgil, and uh, you may have seen it or not on my YouTube channel. I might put the link in the description below. It's just a speed speed it up video. It's nothing crazy. Um, but presto changer, we've got dear old Virgil, and yes, his uh, his little ears are kind of lopsided because I don't know why they're lopsided, but they are. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a thing here, just there, and I'm gonna finish it off with his eyes because I like coloring Virgil's eyes. Because Virgil's very cute. He's a little cute the kitty cat. Technically, he's actually a lion, but uh, his his mane hasn't grown in yet, and he's really self-conscious about that. Anyway. There we go. We have a finished picture. And I'm gonna sign it. Get your signature together, guys. Once you get your signature stuff ready, you're gonna be ready for the real world. We're gonna add a couple more touches. So I'm gonna go through his hair and I'm gonna hatch it. We're gonna go through hatching and cross hatching in another video because that is a part of that is a part of value, and we'll get to that uh, along with the next video because I think it's important that we do the general lesson of color and everything else but for now this is going to be what we have and presto changeo there he is he's a cute little kid isn't he I spell his name there we go we have our first finished finished picture so lesson for today a little overview we went over the basics you know uh, getting to know your general settings, um, getting to know your paper, getting to know your little tools on the side, and getting to know your first real lesson, the circle. And why the circle and the line are the most important thing that you'll ever need in the art world as far as drawing is concerned. And other things too because, you know, circles and lines are pretty much all we use. So I'm going to get into it deeper in the next video. And we're going to go through color theory, we're going to go through, you know, lines, space, value, all that stuff. We're going to go through that, and I'm going to draw some more for you all. And we're going to go through things like ellipses, and squares, and boxes. Hold on, I can do a box real quick, I got this. There we go, it's an ugly box. Um, this is a better box, actually. There we go, there we go, that's a box. And other things. But until then, um... Keep drawing, study a little bit, and my homework for you all is to draw some circles, draw some lines, and work on your general neatness. Um, you're going to need that a lot, especially if you're going to if you're going to be drawing characters like this. Um, if you're going to be drawing a whole lot of things, uh, like you know, at random, if you want to draw your whatever, <laughs> your whatever. You're going to want to make sure that you have a consistent flow to it, so you understand how something works and. I will talk to everybody next time. Goodbye.